Trump is dead. This is a segment I'd like to call the great Venezuelan MAGA meltdown. But it wasn't just MAGA, it was liberals. It was pretty much everyone who doesn't have a compromised brain. Uh, there was uh, there was an election in Venezuela and the uh, socialist candidate Maduro was declared the winner. And instead of everybody just going, oh, cool, an election happened and someone was elected. That is neat. And I hope the best for this country because I don't fucking live in it. Uh, there was a colossal meltdown of epic proportions. <clears throat> I know y'all have probably seen some stuff here and there over it, but uh, we're going to do a recap of everything we've seen here. Oh my God. Um, yeah. Um, tell me that you're not a CIA op without telling me. <laughs> right? I mean, it screaming, glowing, in unison, hysteria, like, like we've never really seen. I mean... I wouldn't say never, but man, the the lockstep unison from across the board, Democrats and Republicans. There's only one other country I could see even defending to that kind of level with that kind of unison, and it would be something with Israel. Even even AOC is like is talking about like election integrity. I'm like, y'all are so cooked. You just dropped the mask. You completely dropped all of you dropped the mask. Oh my god. Yep. Um, I, I don't mean to pat myself on the back here, but my God, did I call it? I can't wait for the collective shrieking from the West over this tomorrow. And holy fuck. I thought it was going to be some shrieking. I didn't know it was going to be the meltdown that happened. So this is really funny. Venezuela's president, Nicolas Maduro, is declared the winner in the presidential election amid opposition claims of irregularities. Look at this fucking community now. The headline. Now, Alan <laughs> McLeod and Rania Kalik, uh, among others, were both there as international observers and said that it happened. It was cleaner and more efficiently run than any U.S. election they've ever seen. So, yeah, there's that. Um, there were also like other certifications that said that this was clean. All the other all the other polls. It was one poll. Uh, and I'm sure you're going to get to it. I don't know if you, you, you brought the Ben Norton piece, but um, if not, we can bring it up and go through it a little bit because holy shit, he kind of figured out, you know, where all this is coming from. Where is their data coming from, quote unquote, that they're using to declare that he's not legitimate. All right. Um, I and, think and I have Ben Norton piece, but yeah, we can definitely get to that. It's geopolitics and empire. Um, so he put out that they're all citing this Edison research out of New Jersey. Um, the problem with Edison research is who they are aligned with, funded by, and it's it's really an interesting piece. Like, I love, I used to love Ben Norton um, a while ago. I think we all did at one point, Gray Zone, Moderate Rebels, partnered with Max Blumenthal. That whole split was ugly. He disappeared and fucked off to China after Max confronted him in Panama. It was really kind of, and he slinked away and it was, it was weak and shitty. Um, ben apparently stole money from him, tried to steal all kinds of stuff, had lawsuits and it was a mess. Anyway, Ben set himself up in China again with this geopolitics and empire, rebranded multipolarista, and he wrote this piece about Edison Research. And like I said, he's only got half the story right. Um, and the reason why is because the other half of the story is who Edison Research was involved with in the 2020 election, which was the, all the exit polls. And we found out at that point who actually technically owns Edison Research. It's like a conglomerate of all the networks. Mm. And oh yeah, there are going to... They're happy to and willing to change the results of the exit polling to suit the results of the election after the fact. And we've seen massive discrepancies that happen from their exit polls, which there's questions as to whether they're actually even executing the exit polling themselves. Nobody's seen these people. Nobody's answered their questions, yet they've got 2,000 respondents that came out and said that they voted for XYZ. In uh -huh. 74 locations across the country randomly. Uh -huh. 
Yes, they're literally using exit polling as as the evidence, Mastron. Like literally. That that's why they're claiming this is a false falsified election because Edison Research said so. Yeah. Okay. So because the rich and powerful said it's this is the play that happens every single time. They lose and they cry foul. But alas, I want to I want to point out the ridiculousness of this community note. Now, I will go on record by saying sometimes community notes are are pretty based, right? It's like, hey, this is bullshit. Here's why it's bullshit. Here's a community note. <clears throat> The headline uses the passive voice and does not say who declared Maduro the winner of Venezuela's presidential election. It is grossly misleading. The passive voice shifts emphasis from subjects to objects and thus can conceal the actor. And they're they're, they're listing a Berkeley course. But so if you just go to the article, if you just click on the fucking article... Okay, you just click on the article right here. You just go to the article. Okay, this again, this is one click. Get get out of here. If this is one click, this is one click of the mouse. Yep. Venezuela's electoral authorities declared Nicolas Maduro the winner. So right off the bat, it's like... <laughs> It doesn't say you declared Maduro the winner. And they had to say the headline because if you bothered to go to the fucking article, you realize that they did. That, yeah. Well, that's what the uh, that, that's what the AP does. Fastest way to disseminate propaganda worldwide in, the, in across the press is Reuters and AP. Like, like whoever added this community note, and I rated it as not helpful because fuck you, I'm not going to a stupid course for Berkeley <laughs> because you want to like this is pretzel twisting on unprecedented levels. But like, this is this is added, and it was rated so helpful that it was like plastered onto this post. Um, it's not even true. It's literally conservatives are running with this kind of shit, despite being like the champions of like shitting on those fact check websites, which I also vehemently oppose because they use the same wormy, slimy shit that this shit does. Where it's like, well, the headline didn't really say. And it's like, oh, did you click the article? Because the article says that, yeah, it's not just mystery people saying he won. It's it's his own officials. So. Right. Well, he owns his own officials, so he rigged the thing, right? I mean, that's that's literally again, and everyone else in the world, including Putin, is congratulating him and acknowledging the win. And here were the CIA talking points yelling no because they got Juan Guaido basically sitting there ready to sell us oil if you know the minute that Maduro decides that he's he's out. Um, yeah. Well, fuck what the rest of the world thinks, because they're all communist dictators. And you should listen to these billionaires on X and uh, and and the <laughs> checks notes uh, intelligence uh, community. So, well, and that's the other thing that that Norton got was that the intelligence community and the Voice of America and all the uh, propaganda overseas apparatus are also funding Edison Research, like directly. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they're customers, quote unquote. So they're subscribers to Edison's stuff. And when Edison says it's no good, despite what the rest of the world says, even though they may be told to put that out there for however, whatever. And I, mean, I got big mm -hmm. problems with Edison. And I've been waiting for somebody to do something about Edison research for four years because I saw this in 2020. I begged a ton of different reporters and independent journalists to look at it then, and nobody really did. Um, one person did, and did an interview with somebody that was enlightening as shit, and said that the guy basically said they're not conducting the polling that they're claiming to conduct. So, yeah. and and nobody's really pursued it, and nobody's looking. Again, it's one of these, just like with the machines themselves. 
nobody really wants to look into it because if they start to, it's a horrible mess. Mm hmm. Anyway, here's some examples of these like unhinged rigged claims. Maduro was stealing well, this election, pasta. of course, and I, I'm going to contribute to the ratio personally. <laughs> um, Maduro is stealing this election. Exit polls had Gonzalez trouncing Maduro, but you want us to believe the corrupt Maduro won by 7%? Time, time for a revolution. Now, Robert, I don't know how you think this whole thing started in Venezuela, mm. but it actually started with the fucking revolution. Okay. Now, who can tell me what is the word for uh, opposing revolution? It's a, what do you call people who oppose a revolution? There's a very specific term. Oh yeah, <laughs> counter-revolution. Counter-revolutionaries, if you will. Or so, bootlickers, potentially. There's a, of course, always. There's a there's a bunch of this shit. This is Richie Torres. We know he's gonna have a bad take. We know it's gonna be oh. bad, but like this is so fucking funny. Nicholas, <laughs> he stole it. Despite boasting the luck. Here's what here's what I, the point I made. This bitch is telling on himself right there. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Look at that. Despite boasting the largest oil reserves in the world, Venezuela has been poorly served by the abject corruption of Nicolas Maduro, who has catastrophically mismanaged the Venezuelan economy to the lasting detriment of his people. By not so, selling us the oil cheap. Exactly. He's like, like literally, you guys, he might as well just finish the sentence. Guys, your your uh your country can't be trusted with all these precious resources. You should let us. This is something like a devil from D and D would fucking say. <laughs> it's just oh, there's uh, there's a TDS version too. I like this one. They sprinkled some TDS on the shit. Oh man, of course. What's happening? This is great. What's happening in Venezuela right now is exactly what elections would look like here in the U.S. if Trump got back in off. <laughs> oh, naturally, because. It's literally being done under Biden and Blinken and their CIA run Avril Haines right now. DNI, I just thought DNI. it was hilarious. I mean, they're wow. literally sprinkling they're sprinkling TDS on top. It's like, you know what? This isn't a bad enough take. I gotta put in some Trump derangement to really to really just make this pop. So and then here's Anthony Blinken's statement. Anthony. It's right there. Let's listen to this piece of shit. Oh, uh, my will, um, if uh, my colleagues will indulge me for just one minute, I want to speak I quickly to the elections that just took place in Venezuela. We applaud the Venezuelan people for their participation in the July 28th presidential election. We commend their courage and commitment to democracy in the face of repression, and in the face of adversity. We've seen the announcement just a short while ago by the Venezuelan Electoral Commission. Uh -huh. We have serious concerns that the result announced does not reflect the will or the votes of the Venezuelan people. It's critical that every vote be counted fairly and transparently, that election officials immediately share information <laughs> with the opposition and independent observers without delay, and that the electoral authorities publish the detailed tabulation of votes. The international community is watching this very closely and will respond accordingly. <clears throat> so just to fill in the blanks here, guys, this is what happens in the rare event that Western, in, uh, Western intelligence agencies do not so successfully coup a country for their own purposes. This is what happens. They cry, they shit, and they piss their pants, and they claim that everything is rigged just the same way. All these people shit on the whole Trump election interference crap. Right. Exact same play. Oh, literally. No, uh, Turco Don did a dueling elections, like uh, like dueling banjos, and it's literally like Hillary Clinton after 2016, 
Donald Trump after 2020. Uh -huh. And it's back and forth and back and forth and officials. And it's the same rhetoric, the same narrative every single time. Love it. Mm -hmm. And then we've Ooh. got... Fancy. This is just too good. This is this this one's real fucking good. Oh yeah. Props to him. He's not he's got nothing but smoke. He's got nothing but smoke. Um yeah. for the West. He gives no, he, he does not it. give he, he gives no fucks. No. Como podemos callar frente al crimen más grande y monstruoso que se está cometiendo en el siglo XXI. You can see what he's no podemos callar. No callaremos. Venezuela no. seguirá hablando con su propia voz para decir alto al genocidio contra el pueblo palestino. Cese de fuego en Gaza. Basta de bombardeo. Basta de asesinato. Paz para Palestina. En nombre Terrible. de los pueblos árabes. He's gotta, he's gotta go. Mis hermanos pueblos árabes. Amados pueblos árabes. Se los pido en nombre del pueblo palestino. Se los pido en nombre de nuestros hermanos musulmanes. Se los pido a los cristianos, a los católicos, a los judíos. A todos se los pido, pero se los pido a esta asamblea y al pueblo de Venezuela. Hagamos más por acabar el genocidio contra el pueblo de Palestina. Hagamos más por la paz y el derecho a la vida del pueblo de Palestina. Of course they're fucking mad. Of course they are. This isn't the whole picture, but I'm just saying. This guy's talking about this. The West is fuming. And I got a bit of a chaser right here. Let's, uh, why does the US government back the opposition in Venezuela? concerns that the result announced does not reflect the will or the votes of the Venezuelan people. Uh, Maria Corina Machado, gracias. Thank you so much for this uh, interview. There it is. Thank you and we'll stay in touch and I promise we'll one day we'll have a close relationship between Venezuela and Israel. And I believe, and I can announce this, that our government will move our uh, Israeli embassy to Jerusalem. That will be part of our support to the state of Israel. Wow, in God's will. Thank you so much. Thank you. Palestina, President. Palestina. Viva Palestina Libre. Is it cluing in for anybody yet? Mm. Hmm? Starting Not out, all roads, all roads seem to lead back to one place. We're off on the road to Judea. Yeah. So yeah. that's cool. This is interesting. Um, yeah, you got another one? It's a little interesting. So, by the way, beyond narratives, uh, beyond that, that that uh, that channel is new. Go follow that. Um, mm -hmm. That's uh, Fiorello's hooked up with them. So this is Maduro. Yeah, they took away his. They took away his check. His government check. Come on, Elon Elmo. You're how not much supposed of to be a, a cuck. How much of a? How much of a? We'll get into that later because him and Elmo are just. I have no fucking words for the developments here. I didn't I didn't even predict this shit. We'll get into that though. But again, how how are you an adult with an adult functioning brain? And you're like, mm, I'm gonna take away his government check, then you <laughs> what are we doing? Wait a minute, you're talking about the platform doing? that literally used to put labels under state you know, state sponsored journalists, but only out in foreign countries that were that, that the US wasn't friendly to. Like Russia and China, you know, they're not, not even that they're not friendly necessarily, but but it's not the same. They didn't do that to British journalists. They didn't do that to NPR journalists. Yeah, I think uh, I think Chen was one of the first. Chen Weihua, when oh, he yeah. got labeled with that Chinese Chen got state one. affiliated media, and they all like, got it. Garland Nixon got like, it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then Chen was like, you know what? I've decided to become worse. <laughs> It's goddamn. Oh, Chen don't play. I love Chen. Do not fuck with Chen. 
If Chen is if Chen got his sights on you, you fucked up bad. Dude, <laughs> oh, I lost saying. track. He's got some of the best ratios on the fucking site. Oh my god. The ratio. That one time I forget he was talking to, but he just replied with bitch, and it was like a 20 to 1 ratio. It was Straight murder. That just that's it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they took away his check mark, which I just I I don't even know. This is this is really weird too. And if you've listened to Politically Homeless and you listen to me on various uh, various platforms, you'll know that I'll be the first one to tell you that um, left to far left infiltration not only has always been a thing, but it always will be a thing. We covered this on the Canada Files when we covered the uh, the new uh, the new party. Uh, but um, so I'll just show you guys how how down bad we are because we're a little down bad. So this is supposed to be this is supposed to be a communist, I suppose, Marxist-Leninist media and organization. Mm-hmm. Venezuela is an economic ruin, despite it being laden with oil. So again, weirdly, um, CIA talking point. Very similar, huh? Right up front, matching Richie Torres, almost verbatim, oh. huh? For 100 years, Venezuela's oil has been plundered by foreign oil companies profiting both foreign and domestic capitalists, not the workers. Today, under Maduro, U.S. Chevron is the top foreign oil firm in Venezuela. Maduro defends capitalist interests in Venezuela. Bro, this is a Marxist-Leninist account. Like, how cooked are we? What the fuck? Is that is that like a... The trots that are that are that have that stake. Everybody's a capitalist to trots. I mean, it's I love them. You know, they, and I love I love how like they call out union leadership corruption, but sometimes they're hysterical and over the top. And again, I don't know if that's who this is or if this is like a a fake, you know, account that's trolling and you know on behalf of the CIA with a with a communist style name, but. Um, Let's do a little bit of investigation. Here. They have, do they have a YouTube channel? Is that what I see? Oh, they're on. They're on YouTube. Marxist Leninist media, huh? Yeah, what I tell you. <laughs> yes. Every fucking time. Every fucking time. I never do it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Murder. Well, T Morgan, I got my glasses on. You bet. Always, always. I'll never uh. understand personally how. And I mean, listen, listen. I'm not the I, I'm not the Marxist guy who's trying to wreck. Okay. If you if you if you are for the liberation of the proletariat, I will work with you and I will support you until you start glowing. Right. But. <laughs> I'm just going to say it's a little weird that so many people follow a dude that was pretty much a fucking Intel agency informant. Just saying. Anyway. Dude. <laughs> Holy so, shit. So far. This is this is fucking glorious. And I got to I got to call a spade a spade. Jackson we will get into how this is not going well for him later. But uh, oh boy, look at this. This is what Elmo shared. Well, they're taking down Hugo Chavez's statue. It was just torn down. Except, wow. no, it wasn't, because this is a video from 2017. No! <laughs> See, I, uh. This is so easily proven, and all of these, I might add, all of these big right wing, all of these Shut big right counts. wing. All of these big right wing accounts have identical talking points. Look, it's 2.8 million followers and wokeness. Mm -hmm. I would I would be very surprised if all of these big accounts and wokeness, uh, declaration of memes, whatever that one glows to the with a thousand suns. <laughs> uh, Lives of TikTok for sure is a fucking fed of some kind. I I sorry, I'm going to my grave on that one. Um, they all have the same talking points right now. And they're all sharing the same, like, just, 
this is the funny part. It's so easily like like verifiable that this is bullshit. It's so easy. Like it's so easy to just be like, "Wow, this is like really, really, really stupid." Holy shit! But uh, like I remember them pulling down a statue of Chavez and and yeah, that is exactly. So that's hella old. Like what they count yeah. on is that people just don't know. They don't remember, and nobody challenges this shit. And they they influence a thousand people. Be, oh my god, they tore down the statue. Did you believe it? And uh-huh. that's what they that's what they're counting on. They don't want to reach us. They get mad at us and they yell at us. And then they, they again the whole thing is who was it? it was Bill Casey said, you know, the CIA will have accomplished its mission when people believe the 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 things that aren't true that all you know they think that that things that aren't true are the truth. And things that the truth are not true. And mm-hmm. right now, I almost feel like we're there. Like, in inside is out, up is down right now. You've got Democrats that are simping for war and genocide and, uh, you know, every an anointed candidate. We'll get to that later tonight. Um, democracy, guys, we'll put, folks. Guys, I'll put it this way. They're calling Kamala Harris a communist. Just think about that for five seconds. The most far left politician in the United States by record. Yeah. Come on. She, she's the most she's a communist guy. She wants to check notes. Do a bunch of establishment shit for capitalists. I, I that's what Marxists do, I guess. I don't know. Um, well, and then there was this, this week. This week, it came out that they handed her the border, you know, the three years ago, and she just said, "Well, they didn't really give me the resources or or the funding, and it, it's really hard." So I just kind of put it on a shelf and just kind of ignored it for three years. Literally, that's so good. Again, Kamala is just, and again, we won't get much into the dog and pony show just because it's bullshit, and you shouldn't be paying attention to this. You should be. Organizing Just, long yeah. class lines. I'll mm-hmm. always say the same thing. Um, and helping each other. And helping each other. Establishing mutual aid, you know? Um, you know, subscribing to Indie News Network. All the things that really help <laughs> help out. Um, that, that does help. Yeah. This is incredible. This is fucking so good. Because <laughs> I keep telling y'all, it gets better. Look at this shit. That they expect us to believe. They expect, like, cameras, I guess, to not exist. People to not have cameras on their phones. I don't know what they expect. Oh, no. Oh, no, it's a dead guy. Oh, no, he's dead. <laughs> Guys, he's dead. Oh, he died. Oh, man. I can't believe this guy's dead. Oh, my God, it's a miracle. He's alive. Wait, what? Wait, what? Wait, what? Hey, hi, hi, it's a miracle. This is how soup headed this shit is. This is how. Is it, is it, is it Jesus? Is that Jesus? <laughs> it might be Jesus. <laughs> and he's also saying that the election was rigged. <laughs> He gets up and says, my dude cheated. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. If if that isn't bad enough, listen to Orange Man himself give the game away as he always fucking does. He always gives the fucking game away. Some of you may have seen this. It's a good clip. Uh, it's, it's Syria over again. We're taking the oil. Venezuela. How about we're buying oil <laughs> from Venezuela? Oh, when I left, Venezuela was ready to collapse. We would have taken it over. We would have gotten all that oil. It would have been right next door. El presidente de los Estados Unidos, Donald Trump, declaró su crimen. Un crimen de lesa humanidad contra el pueblo oh, yeah. de Venezuela. Yes. Declaró que el objetivo de su gobierno y de la agresión y las sanciones contra Venezuela 
era hacer colapsar la sociedad venezolana. Yes. Para que el poder imperialista de Estados Unidos Imperialist se apoderara power. del petróleo venezolano. That's what this is about, you. Se apoderara de las riquezas de Venezuela. Always. Y un buen abogado a confesión de partes, relevo de prueba. By confession of the parties, there is no need for evidence. That's right. Ha declarado su culpabilidad en crímenes de lesa humanidad contra el noble y pacífico pueblo de Venezuela. It's not just Trump, it's his whole administration, pal. It's Pompeo. It's, it's Pence. It's, who was the head of the Defense Department then? Was it Mattis? I don't even know at that point. No, Indy, Indy, Trump's different from the rest of them. They're, they're like, they're different. They're different. They're not, they're not all in the same, you know, they're not, come on, stop, stop. That's a conspiracy theory. A comedian definitely didn't tell us this 20 years ago and we should have fucking listened. Started with Tillerson. Good point, Topher. You know, again, he put the fucking head of Exxon Mobil as the secretary mm -hmm. of state who had no diplomatic experience. Bro, he put the fucking Epstein guy in his cabinet. Like, what are yeah, we doing Acosta, here? yes, he did. Like, like again. What are like, we doing? Buckle up. No, uh, look. It's either that or, or we're all sexist, racist clowns for, for, for not voting for Cam Cam. And that's, that's, your, that's your binary choice. <laughs> Have fun, America. Yeah, guys, Fuck you. You guys can vote for genocide or you can vote for... Girl boss genocide. Real, real big choice. So this is an interesting oh clip from uh, Jackson Hinkle, who is obviously a polarizing figure, but it was it's kind of interesting because I've heard this a lot. I've heard it about Russia. I've never heard Russia of this guy. Stores. What does he do? Uh, well, <laughs> I don't know what he's doing right now. I don't think a lot, but we'll get into that later because he... He uh, he likes to make some interesting choices. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I saw this talking point a lot on how the Venezuelan grocery stores were empty. Look, every dumb conservative in America will tell you that Venezuela has, uh, you know, nothing on their grocery shelves and that people are starving. I want to show you the truth about what the grocery stores in Venezuela look like. So uh, here you go. First of all, We've got a crazy amount of produce over here. We got uh, all the baby goods you could ever want. The prices are very affordable. Uh, more stuff here. I don't even know what's down there. You got gluten-free stuff for gluten-free Venezuelans. You got cleaning stuff. You got stuff for your dogs. You got gluten-free. Cleaning stuff for our Venezuelan women. And uh, what else we got here? We got clothes. Oh, that's like rice and stuff <laughs> over there. Clothes and rice. I Toilet make that paper, food, mistake all the time. Oils. <laughs> um, I, I can't even watch, bro. I can't. This like, I'm like just listening. I'm like, no. Kitchen supplies. Chips. Oh, you got yes, she's going to a supermarket. Yes, we've seen supermarkets here, before. Jackson, thank you. Yes, they have them at supermarkets. I will admit Holy that the greater shit. point he's trying to make is kind of distracted by the by the extreme himbo energy that is emanating. He's like, what do we Dude, got what, here? What, we got what, what, <laughs> what, like what, 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 what? the worst is the worst is like the woods with the TV and the voice. Bro, I watched that guy on stream for years. He didn't talk like this. Like he was, uh, what the fuck is that shit? <laughs> I'm fucking dying. I'm sorry. They need, oh, that's, uh, I, I'm just gonna say maybe like rehearse this a little bit before you if oh come on Topher where's the aisle with the hair on, product man. that's just that's just oh come on man oh, very funny all right anyway, anyway. Um, <laughs> yes anyway yes, because they have grocery stores and like you said Tara pulled that and uh, not pulled that but showed us that they have grocery stores in Russia too Yes. Yeah, she was the OG. She was the one who was like, yeah, this is how much uh, those sanctions are hurting Russia. And it was a better looking grocery store than we have up here in Canada, for one. We're supposed to be like a developed 
nation, despite our prime minister. Anyway, we'll get it. Watch the Canada Files. We'll get into Trudeau. We're going to have a whole episode on uh, every single time he did blackface. Just kidding. But we will have an episode Ooh. on Trudeau. Well, wow, that's anyway. going to be a long episode. Um. So, yeah, Hinkle, the point of this is Hinkle went down to Venezuela, which... Uh, the devil um, went down to Georgia, yes. I don't, <laughs> he went down to Venezuela. <laughs> I, don't I don't think know. it's quite the same song, not quite catchy the same tune name. <laughs> I don't know if that's the best, like, decision to make. But no. I I feel like a lot of these things are done more impulsively. Uh, oh, no, it's gone. Shit. Well, anyway, there are a bunch of accounts that were basically doxing the shit out of well, him, revealing his location, like literally nonstop. Um, and the latest update I have is that the government is detaining him because they think he's going to get killed or something. Um but this is so again, we got more because this this shit just gets more. It gets like ridiculous to like clown clown level ridiculous. First, I just like to show y'all this is the support we're seeing. This is called organic support. Look at that. Again, the narrative they want you to believe is that the nation is furious. They tried to turn this around and say that this was all anti-Maduro protesters. Of course they did. This is people happy because they chose the dude. And just, I'm sorry, for a second, let's think about this logically. This is his third term, as I'm understanding it. So, did they vote for him once and then again, and the third time they didn't want to vote for him? Or did he steal all three? Which is it? I'm confused. Can someone help me out here? I digress. Well, I'm, I'm guessing they would say that he won the first one and that he stole the next two because he had to pat the people in power to place to stay mm. in power. But, um, yeah. So this is except this is getting people are happy is, there and like man of the people and not all the people, but like even the people that they got to complain. And I'm sure you're going to cover that next. Weren't even. In the fucking country. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So th this this has gotten to uh, clown city. This has gotten to like clown Tobia. Elon Musk, quien se mete conmigo, se seca. Quien se mete con Venezuela, se seca. Elon Musk. ¿Quieres pelea? Vamos a darle, Elon Musk. Estoy listo. Soy hijo de Bolívar y de Chávez. No te tengo miedo, Elon Musk. Vamos a darlo, pues. Donde quiera, como decimos en Caracas, en los barrios. Si tú quieres, yo quiero en los mods. Di dónde. So, in an unprecedented turn of events, um, Elon Musk and Maduro might fight. You they know, Dana like, White's already trying to book that shit, right? Of course. But they UFC might get 322. A fight. Like Elon Musk is literally challenging this guy to a fight. Again, I yeah. I know I, I I didn't expect it to get this ridiculous. I, but go look at go look at uh go look at Elon Musk's timeline. He's been posting nothing but like the most unhinged. It's almost like he's like in like a a mania of some kind. Just nothing but like constant like CIA talking points. And again, this is a dude who is literally has contracts with like the military, with the intel agencies. So lots of them. Not surprised. With, mul obviously. with multiple companies. Mm -hmm. SpaceX, Tesla, Twitter. Yeah. But uh, he's like, he's been doing nothing but like melting down company? over this election. Uh, I for I complete. I'm gonna be honest. I completely forgot. I, I tried to Tesla solar Musk too. as little as possible. The boring company where he's literally like drilling holes under cities. Hmm, that's a little unusual. Yeah. They did drill one, um, in Las Vegas. It's actually really fucking cool. Um, it's not the hyperloop that they claim that they promised. 
but it's a tunnel that goes underneath the convention center that's sponsored and owned by Tesla. They use their their boring company thing to drill it out, and they literally have like Teslas that drive you back and forth between the North Building and the South Building. There's like three miles between buildings, and if you go to a conference there that's that big, you kind of need sometimes to do that, especially you know if you're not in the best of physical conditions like some people I know. Um, and they do this free. And they pay people to shuttle them around all day because that's part of, you know, these mega companies and conferences that pay for these conference centers. But contractor Elon Musk is going to fight with Maduro. And Maduro's not a little guy, by the way. No, he's look at his shoulder. Look at those shoulders, bro. Like I thought he, I had, and I've seen I, it like I he, thought I had good shoulders, but he's killing my ass. Like if you if you Maduro boxing, like he's I would he, he could fuck somebody up. <laughs> Hey, right now. But again, like Elon Musk still has to fight Zuck. Never happened. Listen, guys, these billionaires, they're just a bunch of fucking pussies. Okay. That's all they are. That's all they're ever going to be. Okay. He's going to talk big. He's going to get the validation. I'll break this down in another video, but the majority of these people at the top have strong narcissistic traits, strong, strong dark triad cluster B traits. Um, hate to go psych for a second, but it's like, all he cares about is like the image. That's it. That's all Musk cares about. He just wants yeah, he to come off as like a badass. Six, so people lick his ass and go, oh my God, Elon. Oh my God, Elon Musk. I love you so much. Where can I lick your boots? Where can I clean your room for you? Because Jordan Peterson obviously is like, oh my God, like the, the, the simping on this site. But I digress. My point is, He's not going to fight this guy. This guy would fold. The, first off, this guy is obviously like got a really nice frame on him. And Elon is shaped like a fucking Lego. He is shaped like a piece of Lego. He is a he is a real life Minecraft <laughs> character. He's not built. He's not built for any kind of physical shit. Wasn't okay? he like he working could, out to fight Zuckerberg at one point? They were both like talking about doing some kind of crap with that. But yeah. Sleeps the leg, it's over. Yeah, uh, but still, Maduro's, he's a tough dude, and he was a bus driver, so if so he was ready to fuck people up if they didn't pay. Um, All he has to do is push him over. Elon won't be able to get up. He'll just be this block guy on the floor, and then, you know, that's going to be depressing for everybody. He'll get eaten by creepers and shit. But, um, yeah, it's like, this is never, obviously it'll never happen. This is just like, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with Elon. Maybe he's like, He's trying to rally as much consent. My theory is that they're still planning to do like a fucking coup and they're trying to generate as much like manufactured consent as possible for everybody to just kind of buy that the election was stolen because they want to just go in and take the shit. So they need a justification for it. That's oh, my yeah. Well, that's no, what my, they prefer, what they would assumption. prefer is to have the people elect the person that they're that, that, that they've pre-selected to sell us the oil cheaply so that they don't have to have the revolution and destabilize the entire country the way they're doing right now. Mm -hmm. All right. So just I'm going to give a TLR, TLDR of everything here. Um, breakthrough news. Follow them if you don't. Great content. They give a lot of good takes. Um, yeah, that's basically all you got to know. The media is lying to you about Venezuela. By now, you've probably seen the videos of people in Venezuela protesting, tearing down statues, burning banners of the current president, and blocking Venezuela's main airport. They're protesting because Venezuela just had an election, and the country's electoral authority announced that Nicolas Maduro, the candidate of the United Socialist Party, beat the right-wing opposition candidate Edmundo Gonzalez. For months, the opposition said they'd only respect the election results if they won. And sure enough, they immediately mm -hmm. said the election was fraudulent after they lost. So what's their evidence? The first thing they say is that they've collected 73% of the voting precinct's paper results and that the paper results don't match the electronic results. For those who don't know, Venezuela's voting system was designed with multiple controls to prevent fraud. There's a two-step voting process, first where the voter has to produce his or her national ID card and scan their fingerprint to cast an electronic vote, and then the second part, the paper ballot, where the voter receives a paper seat of their vote, which they drop into a ballot box, creating two tallies which can be checked against one another, one electronic and one paper. 
The opposing candidates each have witnesses in the precincts for the counting of the paper ballots to check against the electronic tally that gets released by the electoral authority. There were also over 900 election observers from 95 different countries present, and if you look at the reports from Sunday, people were overwhelmingly reporting a calm, orderly process at the voting stations. The opposition is claiming that they already have three quarters of the paper ballots collected, but they haven't actually produced any of them. So until that happens, it's just talk. Another talking point the media has been running with is this exit poll that allegedly shows Edmundo Gonzalez winning by over 30%. The poll has been cited by the Washington Post, the Wall Street Journal, Reuters, and seemingly shows that the results being reported don't match what voters were saying as they were leaving the polls. The only problem with this? The polling firm they're citing is basically an arm of the U.S. government. As research done by Ben Norton over at the Geopolitical Economy Report shows, the polling firm Edison Research counts among its top clients Voice of America, Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberty, and the Middle East Broadcasting Networks, all of which are U.S. state-owned media that were created to disseminate pro-U.S. messaging in their respective regions. They all work under the U.S. Agency for Global Media, which is a U.S. government agency, and its website says that the media outlets serve, quote, the long-range interests of the United States. Exit polling is also illegal in Venezuela, so they did this outside the law with no way of cross-checking it. U.S. policy towards Venezuela has been incredibly hostile for the last 20 years, so it's hard to believe that a polling firm whose whole business model is based on conducting polls for U.S. state media would suddenly turn out a poll completely contradicting the U.S. narrative. But by far the most telling aspect of all this is that the Venezuelan opposition said they weren't going to recognize the election results way before the election even started. In a video interview with the Financial Times a month before the election, opposition leader Maria Karina Machado said that they expected to win by a landslide, but that if they didn't, it could only be because Maduro committed fraud. And that's exactly what we're seeing now. Venezuela's electoral authority is supposed to have 72 hours to release the full results, but the opposition decided within one hour to declare it illegitimate, and within 12 hours they were staging an insurrection. The U.S. did the same thing too. Almost immediately after votes started being tallied, Antony Blinken, the U.S. Secretary of State, immediately tried to cast doubt on the election results. This begs the question, how could U.S. officials have known their position on the election before it was even finished? And the answer is, they already had their minds made up. They were going to declare the election fraudulent no matter what. In fact, if the U.S. respected the outcome of this election, it would be the exception to the rule. In 2019, Mm -hmm. a Venezuelan politician named Juan Guaido Guaido! claimed he should be the real president of Venezuela after Nicolas Maduro won the election in 2018. Guaido was basically unknown in Venezuelan politics prior to his declaration and wasn't even a candidate in the 2018 election. And yet, despite this, the Trump administration pushed this ridiculous idea that he was actually the president of Venezuela. The U.S. not only met with Guaido like he was the president, they also handed him state assets like Citgo and the Venezuelan embassy while they funded extreme right-wing opposition groups in Venezuela and openly called for the overthrow of the elected government. In 2002, the Bush administration backed the coup against Venezuelan President Hugo Chavez, who had begun redistributing oil revenue from Venezuela's state-owned oil company from the rich to the poor. U.S. leaders met with the coup plotters, who were hand-picked stooges of the Venezuelan elite, and openly endorsed the coup during the brief couple days when the coup mongers had taken power. There's a great documentary about the 2002 coup called The Revolution Will Not Be Televised, which you should all watch. This all begs another question. Why does the U.S. want to overthrow the Venezuelan government? And the simple answer is, Venezuela has the largest petroleum reserves in the world. Mm -hmm. For the longest time, Venezuela's oil was there for the rich to plunder. The Venezuelan elite and multinational corporations treated Venezuela's oil sector like a personal piggy bank, while the Venezuelan people lived in absolute poverty. This went on until Hugo Chavez, a socialist, won the 1998 election and decided that Venezuela's wealth should be enjoyed by the Venezuelan people, not the elite or foreign corporations. Both the 2002 coup attempt and the 2019 coup attempt were directly tied to oil. In fact, in one interview during the 2019 coup attempt, Donald Trump's national security advisor, John Bolton, openly stated that he wanted to see U.S. oil companies take over Venezuela's energy sector. 
<laughs> so if you think of a company like Sitco, which is owned by Pedavesa, <laughs> which is the state-run oil company there in Venezuela, we have a lot of those Sitco assets right here in the U.S. Is that something, for example, sir, that you're looking at? Yeah, well, we're in conversation with major American companies now that are either in Venezuela or in the case of Sitco here in the United States. It'll make a big difference to the United States economically if we could have American oil companies really invest in and, and produce the oil uh, capabilities in uh, Venezuela. It'd be good for the people of Venezuela. It'd be good for the people of the United States. We but Hugo Chavez wasn't just a resource nationalist. He was also an anti-imperialist. Part of what he did to change Venezuela was that he decided that Venezuela would no longer be a cog in the U.S.'s imperialist fever dreams in Latin America. That it would advocate for a new international order based on peace and cooperation instead of invasions and economic exploitation. Venezuela became one of the first countries to oppose the U.S. wars in Afghanistan and Iraq Brandy and also became an unwavering supporter of the Palestinian oh cause. Nicolas Maduro, Chavez's successor, has continued this legacy oh forging no! closer ties with Global South countries to the international system, one that's not based China. on U.S. domination. Venezuela's Bolivarian revolution has inspired China. other progressive movements throughout Latin America that have undermined U.S. power in the region. Antony Blinken, Marco Rubio, and all the other war criminals that have been managing and overseeing the genocide in Palestine didn't suddenly wake up one day and realize that they care so deeply about the little boys and girls in Venezuela. In fact, the U.S. government is currently enforcing a sanctions regime that's estimated to have killed at least 100,000 people in Venezuela through manufactured poverty and scarcity. U.S. sanctions against Venezuela's oil sector, which is its primary source of income, caused the oil sector to collapse and the subsequent decrease of government income by 99%. So yes, the poverty and scarcity you hear about is very real, mm -hmm. but it's caused by U.S. sanctions, which have forced Venezuelans to live off 1% of their pre-sanctions income. This is yep. also what's behind the wave of Venezuelan Facts. migration that you hear about on the news. It all comes back to this policy of manufactured poverty. If the United States actually cared about the well-being of Venezuelans, they wouldn't be strangling the Venezuelan economy to the point where there are shortages of fuel and medicine. In fact, the United States tends to be the most violent when it feigns humanitarian concern. They manufacture social crises and then use it as an excuse for regime change. The U.S. has a long history of supporting these color revolutions. When they know they can't directly mm -hmm. invade a country, they create a social mm -hmm. crisis to undermine it. And now, they're doing the same thing to Venezuela. Don't and fall here for too, but no. Oh, we're, that's later. Sorry. <clears throat> and then... <clears throat> And then just uh, just so everybody knows the game here, whenever you hear one of these talking points, well, if socialism's so great, then look at this country. They use Venezuela as the first example. Every time. But what it means too. is, if socialism were so great, then why is this country that we're directly fucking over in horrific ways not doing better? <laughs> to which I point, okay, if socialism is so bad, lift the embargo on Cuba. Stop fucking around in Venezuela. Won't they fail on their own? No. Because we all know what happens when they aren't allowed to fuck over a socialist country. We're seeing it right now. It's overtaking the world. So, that's a good jumping point into... The plot thickening with all this. Ooh, Where's it coming this from? This is gonna be good. 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 <laughs> Venezuela. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> Venezuela awards two Chinese companies oil production JV contracts. Venezuela has granted two Chinese companies. Yep. Uh Oil production contracts in the Asima, Ori2, Pano, Leona, and Mata Fields in the Aya Chuch. This is really, guys, give me a break. I'm Nordic. In the Orisino Belt, they were talking about loot fisk. I'd have this nailed. Related to the negotiations, said July 25th, the Chinese company and Hui Group will enter as a partner of the Venezuelan state owned PDVSA in the joint venture Petro Carina, 
whose operations are located in the eastern part of the country, between the states of Managas and At um, Managas, Man and, Managas, and Andre Atagul, Atagui. Okay, I can't see. You have to blow it up a little more. I can't really read it. It's a little. Can you? I can't. Like, kind of control scroll. No. No, no, we'll just we'll just switch it to, uh, no. there we go. Oh, there you go. Hey, hey now we can see. Better. Okay. Old guy. Uh, that whatever the fuck that is, I can't. I'm so at the hui. I and like I don't want to butcher the word. I like out of respect for the culture, so I always feel like awkward. Where it's like I don't want to like just screw up this word so hard that they're gonna like feel bad. Anyway. Yes, it's Orinoco. That's right. That, that's right. It's Orinoco Tribune. It, that that's the uh, like the state online thing that I get some news sometimes from Venezuela. All right, so <clears throat> that's kind of a Thank nice you. like it's kind of a nice like final chaser, so to speak. <laughs> where it's like if them supporting Palestinians wasn't bad enough, if the incentives or the oil wasn't bad enough. They're kind of flirting with bricks and kind of already in deals with China. And we all know. So I'm trying to paint a full picture of why everything on your fucking social media feed and everything in your YouTube feed and everything, just everything you're seeing right now is this wild panic over a Venezuelan election. It's because, well, there's a vested interest, and the the empire, if you will, did not get their way. And I, for one, am thankful for small victories. <laughs>